one of my gardening friends has surprised me by asking a question about these lattice panels. And I thought that someday I would, uh, in fact, bring that up, but I decided to let her inquiry spur me into action. I'm j I just showed you there <clears throat> what is a, a curved fence. She's asking about the gray panels and the construction that allows me to do that so that it looks the same on both sides. And I'm going to use a little better place to um, to show you. But uh, if I may just just uh, spread this out a bit. I can never give a quick answer, you know. <clears throat> you saw the five panels there. That was actually one of the last places to use that uh, technique. I started here, oh, I don't know, four or five years ago, between, between these tall arborvitaes, I decided to create these interesting panels. Right now, the, the barberries desperately need to be cut back, so they're dwarfing everything behind it, including the statues and the faces, but there you see I've done the same thing. In this case, my objective was to make each of these panels increase in height as they went to the right, because it is a slope, but not to do it in a regular way, but rather alternating high and low. You can't see it now because they're kind of uh, <clears throat> obscured by the trees, and they need to be cut back too, trimmed out. Thirteen panels, they go all the way inside here into the little hosta garden and around behind the shed. Bear with me. Nancy, see the trouble you are? <laughs> no, I'm very flattered that you would ask. <clears throat> I actually invented it here, I believe, uh, on this pergola trellis. Originally it was white, but as uh, you just saw, the others were gray. But in this lattice size, there is no color choice, just white. A couple of years ago, I took this apart and painted this white panel gray to match the others. You would never know it, but it is painted with uh, a roller, latex paint, very nicely covers plastic. If you have any doubts, it does work. It's very permanent. It's, it's, uh, they're, they're like chemicals. <clears throat> so now those match. And then around here, and this is where I wanted to take you to show you up close how the technique is done. I'm here on the deck, and I'm just going to take you down to this one since it's open. Wouldn't you know it? Airplanes and lawnmowers are out in force. Well, we'll just ignore them. You all have those too. My objective was to make the panels in in a floating kind of way. I call them floating panels because they they are not stuck in. And the reason for that is that plastic does, uh, does an incredible amount of expansion in the heat and then it contracts in the winter. If you were to nail or screw this into solid wood, it would break. It may hold out for a year or so and then all of a sudden it will just shatter. I've had that happen, I know, from previously. but. Uh, you see here, I've built a sort of frame out of 2x4s. First of all, there was the 4x4 four four frame in just a 2x6 header, or 2x4 actually, and uh, <clears throat> in this case. And then attached to the 4x4s four four into the 2x4 using a very long screw here. Now I first do that on the back side, 
Then I cut my piece to fit, cutting back oh, a good half inch. So if there's plenty of room, it's never tight. But if I wanted to, I could snap those out. I could just pull those out if one was to become damaged or I needed to repaint it. But mostly the reason for that construction is to prevent breakage. <coughs> and it looks the same on both sides. If you peek through there, you'll see that that channel construction also allows for water to drain out. Water, dust, bugs and leaves, oh they'll try to catch in there but they won't last long. So I hope that answers your question.